Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me back here in TNO, The Last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Nikolai Lava, but we have a couple new entries in which we got to talk about for Dr. Hawk. Dr. Hawk, Dr. Hawk. If I, if I choose the wrong one, please let me know, but there you go, and then I saw her. And then we go all the way down here. But then another one for Captain Faros. Which actually, if you do this, already four entries, do that one, close out of it again, open up number four? Is it four for this one? Or those five? Well, that's alright. So if you want to read these, please go right ahead. Alright, and there we go. In which we're still trying to do the Ponies of Russia, and I've already read this one again. If you want to read this again, please go right ahead. Another entry in the project, in which for Captain Faros. So if we go over here, Captain Faros, who's already on, as we saw earlier, five. So I'll do that. Close back out. Reopen number, well, I guess four, five? Um, well, okay. Uh, I thought there would be another one. It's not a second Captain Frost, but argument. The Grand Galloping Gull is a disaster. I can't believe an early member of the party and a human. Poor Rykov. Poor dear Rykov. Who? Bakara knew her. He brought her to negotiations. Goodness, is this the kind of leadership we want? On it went. The Soviet, normally a harmonious place, had descended into factionalism in the middle of the anarchy. An exhausted Bakaran stood at the podium and tried to retain order. Comrades, comrades, Bakaran shouted. We cannot give in to petty fights. We have respectful disagreements, but these personal attacks against our friends play right into the hands of... You're right when you talk about hands. As someone who was turning turned into a point just last week, I think I know what I'm talking about when I say there's not a single human who can be trusted. Shouted a red pony from the back, he raised a hoof. No rights for non-ponies. No refuge for specious reactionaries. <clears throat> Absolutely not, said an aghast Bakarin. Harmony is meant to be for everyone, not just ponies. If we start discriminating against one in a group, we're no better than... But he could already see his argument had failed. From the back of the room, a large contingent of points had stood up in protest and was marching for the door. They would not sit idle while Bakar and the human anti harmony extremists into their midst. They would not go like lambs to the slaughter. They were ponies after all. Oh, Elena, what have you done? So right now, we're still doing the humans that remain. Pony superiority. Oh, boy. Complete this focus will also still focus remaining humble will anger the humans. Remaining humble. Reduces admin strain. Reduces admin strain. Or remind them of the origins. Influence on the Pony Crestus goes up. Oh boy. So right now, we are currently at what? 37.5. So we need more Pony support, really. Solidarity and struggle. Chaos of the Supreme Soviet. We've not forgotten. The old guard stands firm. Ooh. The true vanguard will anger them. Hmm. So get this one, or you go this one. I kind of like this one, because you get more military professionalism. They get more pony influence there. <clears throat> and then calls for action. Speak to ponies. The human delegation. The general strike. We got some comments well, to go through as well. We haven't gone far enough. Talking things out. Versus we've gone too far. Well, with this one, we lose 10% stability. We're not your enemies. Anger the ponies. Uh, I kind of want this one. The old guard stands firm. And this one requires... It doesn't matter. Okay. Influence. I do want that one quite a bit. But let's see. Let's see if we can go with... Oh, that's not bad. Oh, research begins to slowly worsen. We get more agriculture development. Slightly decrease minority rights. And we do need quite a bit more pony influence. And this one, we don't really lose too much. Let's go pony superiority. What debate is there to really have? If humans are so good, then why aren't they flying or practicing magic or doing great feats of strength? Exactly. They can't. People chose to give up their humanity and embrace ponyship for a reason, after all. The pony is, better, is a better specimen under any examination. Faster, stronger, even smarter than humans just don't match up. Very, very nice. So yeah, political crisis. Uh, stockpile oil was 550, but we still have a good amount, but... It would decrease eventually, so we're just going to stockpile more stuff for now. I think that'd be okay. And supplies, not great in some of these areas, which does kind of suck. And we need more political power. Always, always, always need more political power. Expand the power grid. Hmm. That would be bad. What do we have around here? How about our supplies? It's really not good. Oh, there goes Armenia and Turkey. Killing each other as always. Um. Honestly? You guys have supply issues? Maybe we'll just lower you to there? Yeah. We'll see if that, if that creates any more supply issues or any less. Because we can really use stuff without supply issues. I can only get 0.49 political power every single day, which does kind of suck. Uh, look at the Vyaka. Ooh, well, it's, that's okay. Alrighty. Humans that remain. Pony superiority. Remaining humble. Hmm. 
I do want to do that one, though. Uh, on the corner. A few years ago, Bakar delivered onto Siberia its greatest sim. He called it Pontification. A few years earlier, you might have heard Alexander Mann in the frigid north of Amalon, where his beautiful sermons commanded net massive crowds. Now he was little more than a cornerside preacher. His new message proved controversial, too radical for most, for father men hated poems and everything they stood for. When God created man, he did so in his image. Our form, eyes, hands, faces, all were crafted supreme, a gift from the divine spirit. Look at what pontification does to these gifts. They are left disordered and broken. Our eyes shift to the massive blobs, our hands flatten to unjointed hooves, even our faces contort into massive snouts. What did just God have asked this of us? The Bible speaks ill of magic, and magic is all around us. We cannot embrace it. Slowly, a crowd of humans began to surround the strange, strange man. Some recognized him. Others simply were curious as to the nature of his ranting. What they did not expect to find was genuine appreciation of his words, certainly. He was too radical, too, probably too radical, but there were something in his words, something powerful, something worth paying attention. Those of you who remain human, I love you all. You'd write resilience in the face of sin. It is true beauty. Stay strong, my brothers. Heed my word. You must stand resolute against equine sin. I want to improve society, and I don't want to hurt our research. Uh, we need to get more influence with the ponies stuff. Actually, this one, probably will we get to improve. Um, this one does what? Slightly decreased scoring time, which is not bad, but poverty. Okay, so we're 40% again. I definitely want this one, though. Which means doing this, we have to do this one. Go anger the ponies if we do this one and this one. So, which means you can't do that one. And I don't really care about this one, so we might as well remind them of their origins. Darn it, I want to do superiority, but remind them of their origins. Certainly, nobody can deny that ponies are impressive and there are benefits to it, but too quickly they forget that they were humans once. They too stood on two legs and traversed life with all of its challenges without the aids of flight or extreme strength. Let them celebrate their benefits all they want, but they must remember they didn't always have them. Yeah, sorry we didn't go the way I originally envisioned, but whatever. Remaining humble. Ponies, yeah. Talk about friendship and harmony all you want, but it feels disingenuous when you're so full of yourself. Just listen to the way they talk about themselves. All pruning and prideful about their skills, parading their wings and their horns, and their ludicrous strength to the humans as if they were muck. Read between the lines and they sound more like oligarchs or strongmen parading their wealth or power all around over their subjects than they do communists. The humans must remain humble, because that is the true spirit of Lenin and the revolution. And not whatever four-legged delusions of grandeur the ponies like to talk up. Pretty much, man, pretty much. Um, so 65. Let's keep working on some more industry stuff. That'll help us make us nice and strong. Hopefully. At least that's a hope. And do that. We'll get some more output too. At least we have enough pony power for now. We're demobilizing. Why? Effect of manpower is not bad. Huh. Minus 70% for more support. Oh, I didn't realize that. Economy-wise, we have a yearly deficit. Hmm. Because we have very... A lot of divisions, pretty much. But we're at what percentage? Twenty six point five percent. That's not bad. We'll keep growing the economy. We should be okay. But you never know. And of course, it helps when we cut down poverty. Um, anything really super important? Agriculture is barely going up though now. Admin efficiency. Ad functional administration is pretty decent actually. Stream of bureaucracy is definitely better though. Definitely, 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 definitely better. <coughs> Only three and a half billion in GDP. That's so bad. Central Siberian Republic. Supply-wise, it's looking, well, quite a bit better. See a few issues here and there, but it's just because of exercise. Remain humble. Remain humble if we have to. Solidarity and struggle. Yeah. Because right now, we're currently what percentage? 45.5. There's more material. Anything else down there yet? Nope. That's fine. Solidarity and struggle. While well, the four-legged comrades are very closely intertwined with harmony, you can be fools, Aaron, to suggest that they're only ones that can champion it, after all. Those that invalidate the core harmonic tenets of friendship. There's no true harmony if you start shooting out the humans. Both pony and human will be part of our harmonic vanguard and face the trials of the revolution together as friends. Whether they like it or not. Alright, so we'll stop making divisions for now, because we just can't afford to make any more. We'll improve whatever we do have, though, currently. And with... Oh. Probably some arty on them, but we actually do have enough. We do have enough, so let's do that, let's do that. We really do have two en enough divisions for now. 26 divisions is not bad, it might not be enough in the future, but... So. Oh, they have a little rebellion here, nice. Hey, that's looking pretty good. Minus 0.18. That's going to take a while to cut down poverty, but... We're slowly getting there. Ah, slightly better. Doesn't really affect us too much, but, you know, it's whatever. It is what it is, but some comments include what? 
Uh, someone says, this mod just went from a joke, sub-mod, to an actual horror show, and I love it. I don't know how I'd react to finding out that talking, dancing, singing ponies who can pick up things without hands that have eyes, a third of the heads, but I'd prob probably either go insane, try to kill it, placate it, or just try to pretend it doesn't exist. Someone else says, um, all we need in this mod is an alien invasion. Someone else asks, does anyone know how to turn off the pony events? There eventually will be a vert way to do it. I mean, it it'll be originally disabled. Actually, it might be available right now. That in which you can disable it, so, um, so yeah, eventually you, we will, you'll be able to disable it, or just not even, or just turn it off as an option. Nice. We need to have a second Pacific Fleet. Yeah. New construction speed, is it? Eh, that would help, but all it does is increase the cost of it. I don't want to increase the cost. There's no point to do it yet. Chaos in the Supreme Soviet. The crash has reached the floor of the Supreme Soviet. We've not forgotten. Um, let's see. So this one, we get plus 5% more stuffy stuffs. Plus, oh, shnikes. This one have more than 75% influence. Oh. <laughs> we'll have a failsafe, basically. We could risk it. Calls for action. Speed of the ponies. Well, let's do this one. That's a gosh darn nightmare. The tensions in the Supreme Soviet between the pony and human factions really started to boil over, and they're at each other's throats. Who stamp on the ground in fury, hands wave in the air in rage, and the voices on both sides simply grow louder and louder. The powder king's already looking set to blow, and it's honestly a wonder nobody's gone shot yet. Well, it really can't be ruled out yet. They just get angry and angry, but they're showing no signs of calming down to their own accord. We're going to have to do something about this before their rage becomes too much to control. And it does help us reduce admin strain, which is very, very good to reduce. Where is it right now? Admin strain. Yeah, that sucks so much. Solidarity. Nice. Could keep going with that. Pegasus technology would be nice too, but keep going with this stuff too. Alright. Basic infantry equipment, improved rifles, equines. Because these are cost more to make. 5 breakthrough, 34 defense. 26 defense, 4 breakthrough. 9 soft attack versus 12. So they're just better overall. Anti tank, artillery, equine equipment. Now we have enough equipment, but earlier, my god, it was so god awful. Ay, ay, ay. That's not bad now. Who was this? P Pony maternities. Produce more material. When effect when removed, increase by 0.02%. Well, yeah, we could try it. Why not? Oh, begin drilling. If you want to know about that, please go ahead. If you want to know about extending the roads, please go ahead as well. We'll get there. Calls for action. Oh, gosh, things are getting out, out of who fast. Points all across the harmonious union have stopped working and breaking them into thematically appropriate tunes. Instead, they have taken to the streets. They carry placards and megaphones demanding that Bakar and recognize the natural supremacy of pony kind over humanity. This is this kind of behavior isn't friendly at all. In fact, it's pretty mean. We'll have to be super careful in handling the agitators. Otherwise, a nasty antics could lead to the complete and utter dissolution of the state and permanently discredit our ideology. The work can make some humans sad. Both are bad. Paral paralysis in the Supreme Soviet. Bakar and watch. As the strawberry knight stepped down for the podium amidst the jeers of the human assembly, her speech was impassioned and hateful, and halfway through a condemnation of human aggression that shouts drowned out her speech. He hoped that other members would express more reconciliatory sentiment. The next speaker came from the human side, and Buck Harn watched him, straight up to the podium with a worrying demeanor. His speech, too, was lost among the stopping of who's and neighing from the pony side. It was becoming clear that the government was paralyzed in its self-segregation. Neither side would accept or send any representatives over to the other half of the assembly. The closest they came to speaking to each other was shouting over each other's speeches. Strawberry remained near the human speaker as he cut off his speech. She grinned as she, he glanced towards her and spoke. We don't want to hear shallow justifications, Luca. So think back to your friends and plan how you intend to resist the inevitable. Bakarin saw his lip curl and mirth a smile. The inevitable? Luca responded. My apologies, Kara, but I don't give way to the predictions of a stinking mangy m pony. Hey, it's Strawberry, she screamed as she flung a hoop out to strike him. He jumped back and then readied his fist to retaliate. Enough, uh, bellowed Bukharin. The whole chamber went silent. I declare a 30 minute recess starting now. I'm disappointed in all of you, especially you two, gave Strawberry and Luca an accusatory turn and look. Or look and turn. I expect never to see such a shameful display again. Go as they shuffled out. Bukharin stuck under seat. How did they get to this state? For the first time since he received his gift, he wasn't sure what to do. Would anything make a difference? But he could only try.
That's all we ask. Try, try, try until you fail, until we talk about the old guard standing firm. Just think about it logically for a moment. This moment or a pontification. An adapting society to the suit their needs is moving at an alarming rate, perhaps ahead of the Soviet ideal and its aims. Adapting is just another way of saying revising, and this new breed of harmonic superiority is bound to be a hotbed for revisionist ideals. In the end, only the humans will be the ones touting true harmonic communism. The old guard standing against the young bucks, and so it's our duty to keep any revisionists that spring up in line. Another new one for Dr. Hawk. Right now, it's a little laggy. Um, where's Dr. Hawk? So he's already has five entries. Let's take a look. Six? No. There's no six one. Ah. <coughs> they won't stop crying. It's because we just beat them with love. That's all we'll say. All right, so which one's next? Education. I like that one. Academic base is really good to do. Research facility is pretty good. Worker training. We get a bonus for industry, which we get to really use. There's also a land reform for more agriculture, potentially. Mm. Let's go with that one. It's only twenty percent increase or blueprint research thing, but still, they won the German Civil War. Oh, this guy. Okay. Point eight four, not great. The steeple chase in the streets. It was a dreary morning when the ponies began marching. The angry sky drummed with thunder in the distance, underscoring the tens of thousands of hooves that clopped through the streets of Irkutsk. Pony power banners and signs with anti-human slogans were plentiful as the ponies flooded the streets. It was 9:47 when a gang of teenage boys who rocked the crowd. It was 9:49 when the first building was on fire, and all heck broke loose. The horde of ponies galloped throughout the city, igniting a zidane of cocktails, overturning cars, and assaulting anyone who resisted. Of course. The Pink Guard was quickly mobilized to restore order and peace to the city. The 5th Revolutionary Brigade, veterans from the Portal Incident, arrived to block off access towards the major human residential area. The riders quickly took notice and began rallying around the beleaguered troops. The traitors, the one pony cried, they protect the enemies of harmony. You'd side with the bipedals of your own? Or bipeds? How could you betray us? Another screamed. The mass of ponies began to grow until a whole swarm was arrayed before the crowds, or the soldiers. The unit's commander took a few steps back, contemplating the situation. Was it worth stopping them? Could they even stop them? As the ponies began to advance, he would make a choice. Harmony cannot be achieved with more violence. Disperse him in the name of harmony. That definitely makes it a little more balanced. Thank God. I guess increased monthly population doesn't like does like nothing though. I've got, I, I'm not sure what else to do. We only can have 550, so general strike. General strike. Great changes in history has always been precipitated by mass action by the people and for the people. Such is true in the history of Russia and the old Soviet Union. Who can forget the general strike in 1905 at the top of the absolutism of the star? So too will the peoples of the harmonious union strike again. The two sons and daughters of Russia, those who have chosen to remain human, are planning the latest general strike against Bukharin's pony utopia. With the mass once again rising up in solidarity, the central government will have no choice but to listen. Someone asks, uh, from another comment, uh, I suggest using cost commands for auto capitulation of difficult nations or giving yourself a better army or supply. Uh, the no, no step back DLC really screwed up the Far East. Someone else says, what do you need to get the Easter egg going? Just have a rule on for the Easter egg. I'm not sure which one it is, but you just need to get it going, so. Um, someone else says, great campaign so far. I'd move to Siberia in a heartbeat if this happens in real life. Someone else says, everything is possible in the TNO world. Uh, another person says, the fact that they made a whole high-quality reunification tree for a pony nation uh, shows a de dedication to the devs. Shows a dedication to the TNO devs. Another person says, the minute many need your help. And someone also asks if we can do Kemerovo with Prince Yuri as a successor. Eventually, yeah, I promise. We'll do it eventually. The human delegation. The human faction of the Supreme Soviet has steadily dwindled over time, yet remained a prominent force, especially in this time of crisis. Their leader is an orthodox preacher by the name of Alexander Mem, who has been at the forefront of the voices arguing in humanity's favor. Whatever misgivings we might have with men's vocations, he stands as an extremely important figure in talking with the humans. We're organized to sit down with him to find out what it is they really want, and hopefully negotiate some sort of practical, practical solution. So just kind of pushing through here. And that's point six. Point one six. Yeah, that's all right. Happy March, everybody! Happy, happy March. Uh, which one's going to really improve first? You gotta, you gotta, not me gotta, but you gotta. How are we looking here? Yeah, 
You know, we're maxing on the supply stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we, these guys are taking a while with this. But the AI struggles a lot. Because of manpower. They have a crap ton of manpower, but they have no factories, no production units. They have all the production units. Holy crud. <coughs> Ops is still trying to unify, and Vyatka is as well. Oh, man, it's so bad. So even though I, we struggled a lot, and I apologize for being so ragey, we're the first ones to unify. Well, I guess, yeah, these guys are second, but still. There's a general strike. Human delegation. Speak to ponies. All this good stuff, man. Ah, or brittling a scab. Hey, ho, 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 ho. Pony, pony quotas have to go. Was well, a dominant sun of the sunny morning outside the Kutz aircraft factory. Thousands of the workers who worked in the plants had gathered outside on strike, chanting any pony, any pony slogans. <laughs> New requirements that workplace pony employs a number of humans and ponies reflective of society meant many were under the threat of losing their jobs and the engineers weren't going to go out quietly. Lucy had never seen such a large crowd of humans on her walk at school, to school. There were many shouting, just as many onlookers staring at them with amusement. The pony girl navigated her way through the edges of the crowd, avoiding the gaze of pickets holding up signs of dead ponies. She began to quicken her pace, keeping her eyes on those who might do her harm. Hello. Uh, <clears throat> as she zigzagged between men and women before she ran into something and stumbled to the crowd, before stood a large muscled man who glared with her disdain. Look over here. One of the job stealing mange hides is trying to get past. Are we going to let it? The man bellowed. What? Please, I don't mean to bump into you. I go to school down the... Lucy's explanation was drawn up by the sea of strikers that surrounded her. She found a hand to grab a hoof and another someone help me. Anyone? RTM watched the strike from a nearby store. The class had been born that day, so he skipped to watch his father protest the government. He had just taken a bite out of an apple when he heard the cries for help coming from the crowd. He saw a young blue pony being picked up by his father and a father and a few other friend, friends or men. Was that Lucy? She was the only blue pony he knew of, and that she would always trade snacks with him. RTM felt conflicted. He knew his family would hate him if he intervened, but Lucy was his friend, and hurting her was really was hurting her really the solution? It was not Lucy's fault. And she was never seen again. Speak to the ponies. Every pony's pretty upset. Ever since that misguided woman attacked Rakov, there's been fights on the streets and arguments in the Supreme Soviet. Even parties have gone counseled. Parties, we can't let this continue. It isn't the harmonious way. Instead, we're going to talk things out like any friend should. We'll approach members of the pony block, disorganized as they are, and try to understand how we can help them. Even though they don't have a central leader, and even though their concerns can be pretty confusing, we're sure we can find a way to cheer them up and get them trusting humans once again. Pretty much. It's the only path forward, my friends. Whether we like it or not. <coughs> More GDP would be would be quite nice. Research. I prefer academic stuff right now, so. School. Ah, uh, but do improve machinery stuff. Because that just it's it just flat out. You, you just get all of it. It's just a solid reform. Slowly improving the military. 26, 50, oh wow, oh, it's already 50%. I hate this so much. <sighs> so annoying. I, I don't want to cut this down. You know what, screw it. I'm not going to cut it down. If the game wants to screw us over for this, well, it's not our fault. It's the game's fault. We have to have a big military. A pony's in a man. But Karn looked over at the man in the priestly garb intently, focusing on the cross that hung from the man's neck. Alexander Mann it was no ordinary priest. His fiery sermons and speeches made him the unofficial leader of the humanity. But Clarence was never particularly religious. Its doctrine served to disempower the people, but him and men shared ideals, and perhaps they could broach a compromise in the name of harmony. Greetings, preacher. I'm pleased that you agreed to this meeting. While God's servants often score me for my ideals in the name of questionable reasons, I'm hoping we can come to a more harmonious understanding. How can the union help bridge the rift between you and I? Your policies are threatening to leave humanity behind, men replied, emphasizing humanity. That is simply not true. The union serves... Ooh, look at that. Serves pony human alike, while Karn responded with a warm smile, helping her reduce the growing tensions. And yet her scarce resources are being put towards tailoring everything so the ponies may live happily. The human toils for his family and community, yet the fruits are reaped towards endeavors that threaten his livelihood. How is this harmonious? But Karn bit his tongue, men, men was many things, but could a devout priest like him be a liar? Were the current policies harming more than helping? Was the union promoting the welfare of some over the others? But Karn's thoughts were interrupted by the intense stare of men, whose patient eyes waited an answer. Accusations are unfounded, all are treated equally. Perhaps we've mistakenly overlooked some of our comrades. And now it's for Greymane. And... <coughs> oh, this one up. It keeps going towards more of the human side. I guess that's what I've noticed. 
Then what? We've gone too far. Oh, another one for gaming? Wow. That was fast. There we go. Nice. Um, calm the humans down if they're angered. That's the only way we haven't gone far enough. Um, probably. Come on, come on, we have to pick up the pace here. We can't stop now. We all have this progress to undertake. Humans would have to slowly, uh, deathly crawl. Slow, slow us. I'll have us slow to, slow to a deathly crawl and freeze to death. Naturally, the ponies know what's best in this scenario. Moving forward with progress and advancing in society is what harmonic communism is all about, surely. Indeed, so is the rightists and oligarchs who talk about conserving their way of life and bogging society down in their own self-interested muck. We have to act now and keep moving with society forward. In fact, why are we even so discussing this? We're wasting time sitting here with our hooves up in our snouts. Uh, so let's get on it. Yeah. The walkout. Let's see how this one does. Or maybe not. Because that goes go 5% more for them. But that would only put them at 52% versus some other odd. How the other horse lives. Buck, book or Buck Harna approached the stage, flanked by two guards. For the first time, he was truly frightened by the crowd, a crowd of ponies, no less. These were the true pony supremacists, radicals who did the same Buck Harna in his vision. They needed to be calm, but it was clear that it wouldn't be easy. Buck Harna attempted to calm the crowd. I have come to speak to you, my comrades. I have heard reports of your demands. I hope that today I can explain to you all the value of harmony. Jeers erupted from the audience. Some called him names, human, human hugger, pony Judas. Buck Harna stopped himself from responding with anger. There had to be a reason for all his rage instead. Yes, yeah, a question. What do you want from me? Mares and stallions? I'm here to listen, I promise. The ponies murmured among each other before a small purple mare, seemingly a local leader, trotted to the front of the crowd. We're scared, she said, eyes with an adorable fear. The humans hate us. They parade us or parade their hate through the streets. They scream at us. They pull out our manes and try to ride us. Your words of harmony are not saving us, Bakar, and we need protection. The crowd erupted in whoops, cheers, and thunder of hoofsteps. Bakar took a moment to consider his response. Could he truly pledge himself to these radicals, or should he maintain moderation? Expand your concerns? Are looking at granting further protections? Harmony will overcome this friction in time. Now it's a lot more balanced. We'll see. And it won't be super balanced all the time. Supremacy of the ponies. Hierarchy is not in conflict with harmony. Nay, true harmony relies on acknowledging the weaknesses and strength of every individual, even if such a strength is absolute. After years of woe and conflict, we have seen all we need to see from humans and ponies, and the truth is obvious. Ponies are all about all counts superior. Sure, humans have thumbs and walk on two legs, yet our engineers have managed to design solutions for all problems, easily integrating pony kind into a world designed for men. The verse is not true. Pony magic surpasses all humanity can offer. No matter the job, ponies are supreme. It's simply the way, the life, of things. Until we acknowledge this fact, the union will not be in, in harmony with the truth. I might as well do that too, I guess. So we did that, spent political power, and it did nothing. That's pretty bad. So, eh, lesson learned. The walkout. The forms were meant to be a list of common sense changes, every ch uh, uh, changes everyone in the harmonious union could accept. Point of harassment was clearly a real problem. Even the human radicals would agree that something needs to be done. People wanted comfort and calm, and to the end of the chaos surrounding pontification. That was all German Bukhar and which defects. It didn't come off that way. Perhaps it was the German's general enthusiasm. Perhaps it was the roars of the point delegation. Perhaps it was the sheer length of this list, setting changes in everything from the mining system to the building codes. Whatever the cause. <coughs> the humans in the crowd did not see his reforms as common sense. They appeared as unfair pony uh, affirmation or affirmative action. <clears throat> A slap in the face of the social equality which Harmony was based on. The announcement was followed by a thunderous approval, from the ponies at least. They cheered and stomped like never before, happy to be finally recognized by a man who had long designated their leaders as extremists. Some began to cheer Buckhorn's name, the savior of pony kind. Yet despite himself, the chairman could not focus on the joy of the pony delegation. All he could do was watch humans as they marched out of the building, simmering with rage, a prize for every good deed. And conflict resolution is magic. Many knew Buckhorn was a capable statesman, a charismatic leader, and an intelligent bureaucrat. Yet today, he has shown the world yet another of his many skills, conflict resolution. The crisis on the streets of Arkutsk is beginning to fade. No longer does talk of conflict fill its streets. Nay, the hearts of its popu population are filled with harmony. Humans trade with ponies. Ponies and humans work together in mines and shops. Even the bars are integrated and as ponies and humans toast their bright days and long friendships. The harmonious union is for the most part, at least for the moment, united. A deal, however, informal has been reached between the pony kind and mankind. Now we may look beyond this matter and towards a bright future as friends. 
gods. And so, ponies and humans must never be apart. Let this crisis be a lesson for our future, so that Comrade Rakov's death may not be in vain. At long last, Bakar tried and failed to stifle a yawn. Ponia chuckled softly. A retired comrade, her voice was soft in the lofty presidium chambers for the first time in the past month. An air of calm had finally settled in Irkutsk. Gone were the daily fights in the Soviet. Gone were the exhausting presidium meetings where all felt the pressure of what seemed to be the end of harmonious societies. They knew it. Instead, there was peace. They'd done it. That's what happens when you get old, I'm afraid, he chuckled. He tried and failed again to stop another yawn. It's proving the point. There's always been, really been a moment to rest in Sarikov. Then he off into silence. Sarikov wasn't your fault, Nikolai, Tomsky assured from across the table. He slid his hand to rest over Bokharin's hoof. It was a welcome comfort. We all knew the risk when we answered your call. And we've already done so much, Ponya asked, or added. She nudged Bokharin with her shoulder. We've won. Harmony's stronger than ever in Russia, and you can rest at ease. My, Russia might not run itself, but that's why you have us, right? All right, all right, I get it, Bakarin chuckled. You're all correct, of course, forgive me. I seem to have gotten philosophical in my old age. I think I should really take your advice and sleep. Acknowledging their goodbyes, he got up from the table and left the room, walking through the quiet hallways to a small apartment he kept near his office. He smiled as he nodded to the guards in acknowledgement, listening to the bird song from outside the halls of government. It was a beautiful day. Finally arriving at his chambers, he gently lay down onto his bed. Closing his eyes, he soon, very soon drifted off to sleep. Peace at last. Do we all the other stuff? Also, if you're wondering about the Murr excavation, please go right ahead. Oh. We get diamonds over there, huh? Very nice. The Udaknaya excavation. If you remember that again as well, please go right ahead. That'd be very good. Yay. And okay, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. So Is that it until we have to reunify this place? I did cut off a couple divisions or to get rid of them, but still. Ascension. Bokharin's eyes shot open, coming to wakefulness as quickly as he had left it. But looking around, he found himself in a dark, endless expanse. The only other being he could see was stood right out in front of him. She was tall, standing head and shoulders of a Bokharin himself, with both wings and of a pegasus and the horn of a unicorn. She was a dark blue with man with a mane that flickered as though lit by the stars. Who, who are you, Bokharin asked, wonder in his voice. <clears throat> the figure before him blinked owlishly. Then she laughed, a sound that seemed to echo around him. I apologize, it's been too long since I've not been recognized. I am Princess Luna of Equestria. Princess, he asked, raising an eyebrow. Yes, princess, she confirmed. I know your thoughts on monarchies, though as ours is a monarchy in the name of harmony. What well, approaches unorthodox, I'm quite impressed with your work. You've performed a great feat of harmony, the likes of which neither world has ever seen. You may have brought you have brought harmony back from the brink of ruin and forged a society that will remain strong for years to come. This is to be commended, young unicorn, and rewarded. I wish to offer you another choice. The choice to ascend even further and become what you have always meant to be an alicorn. You intend to make me a prince? You can use this power to become a prince, though I doubt you will do so. Instead, you will become an icon, a brilliant symbol of harmony, breaking the chains of the downtrodden and oppressed for all time. That is what we offer. This is what you have earned for your struggle. Bakarin barely had time to consider. If this is what is best for the people of Russia, then I accept. Luna nodded. I would ask you to kneel, though perhaps it is better that you remain unbowed. Stand then, Nikolai Bakarin, breaker of chains, and accept the power. And Bakarin woke forever changed. Nice. Symbol of harmony, more political power. Ooh. Look at that guy. Bukharn or Bukharn. No, oh, good daddy. Nice. Ah, cool. The gears of a harmonic society. Oh. Probably gets better. Share the wealth. The marching of the hooves. Okay, so we actually do stuff here. Nice. Ooh, that's really good to do too. Ooh, I want to do that one first. The thundering of the boots. <clears throat> the number of humans ready to fight in our armies are not to be understated, of course. Many of them already make for fine soldiers within our army that are perfectly capable of taking up the task of war. And we cannot throw away the tactical thinking that many of them bear in battle. The humans are ready to fight, and so they will be allowed to form ranks in the pink army all the same. But the gears of a harmonic society. Like a machine. Our society is made up of many individual parts and pieces, each playing their part and serving something far greater than themselves. For our society to run well, we must make sure that each and every one of these pieces are in pristine condition and are well maintained. The economy, industry, ponies, and the humans. These are all important pieces for the grand machine. It's our duty to care for them to preserve our grand harmonic society. Army of the people. More daily political power. You lose attack. You get more defense, which is, you know, that's a give and take. Overall, I think that's a good one to get. <clears throat> and happy August, everybody. New month, new us. Maybe. Slightly. Very cool. I don't know why the, this cost keeps going up. I didn't add anything here yet. It doesn't make sense. And these guys are still struggling with this. That's so bad. Hmm. Yeah, foundations of a utopia. We we gotta get more uh, poverty change. Uh, where are we with this? For uh, <clears throat> oh wow, Italy joins the OFN, huh? Phase two. And we have to wait till like sixty nine to go to war with these guys. So. 
Which one went to land reform? Probably do scientific research next. Workers' organizations? Oh, actually, that's not bad either. Do you get more political power? Maybe we'll empower workers' organizations. <clears throat> do we still have overextended administration? Born in Magadan. Ooh, mining revenue's not bad. No, we don't, it looks like. Any society, interspecies army. Alright, not bad. Cooperation is key. That's pretty good. Land doctrine cost goes down too. Conditions for the flight of the Pegasi focus. Okay. People's army. Daily pickle power plus point one is not bad. <clears throat> but the foundations are for utopia. Many governments and leaders, including the Soviet Union that well, we now succeed, have claimed that the implementation of the preferred ideology would lead to the creation of a utopian society that would bring prosperity to all that support it. Even Governor Bukharin himself admitted that at the time. Those are merely words of flattery, and the concept of utopian society is simply too much to ask. However, this will change. The ideology of harmonic communism will, for the first time in the history of man and opponent kind, create the foundations of a truly utopian society. Where pain and sorrow are a thing of the past, where friendship rules above conflict, it's time for us to conceive this utopia. Oh, but poverty life. Oh, poverty. I gotta do poverty. You have to do it. You have to do it. Happy September now. Minus 0.14. Nice. I mean, I, didn't, I went back and what he did it earlier. Debt servicing is so high. That's probably why we have so much of that. Hmm. I mean, there's nothing we can do. We only have 23 divisions now. <coughs> the faster we go to war, the better. These guys are still struggling an extreme amount. Is George Wallace president? What's he up to? Abroad. Okay. Well, whatever. Very nice. Foundations for Utopia, and they'll probably go to the People's Army, even though we lose like two and a half percent wars or two and a half percent division attack. Getting that extra point one every day will add up over time. Uh, Grand Military Academy of Magadan. Oh, Second Pacific Fleet, Rule of Skies, Planes of the Night Sky, Project Shooting Star. Hmm, Flight of the Pegasi. Cultivating the winter, economy of magic. GDP growth will go up. Far Eastern Siberian plant. Ooh. That'd be kind of nice. Encourage urbanization. Growth will go up. Fire will begin to slowly improve. That's not bad, too. The future of our kind. Academy of Friendship. Ooh. Anatomy. We're still got higher education. That'd be good. Books for children in the foals. Cool. People's Army. In traditional state, the role of the armies is to enforce the government's authority to protect the government's interests and to fight the government's wars. In traditional state, the army is not beholden in any way to the people, it only occasionally claims to protect. However, we're not a traditional state, governing in accordance with the principles of communism. Our army is one that serves the people and the proletariat. Instead of enforcing the government's authority and suppressing the people's will, our army shall be the people's first and last line of defense against injustice and fascism. The army shall be made of people, by the people, and for the people. To do anything else would be to abandon the revolution's principles and lose everything that makes us who we are. <clears throat> An economy of magic. The truth of the matter is that we're not an ordinary state. We, what we have is no other nation on earth could possess for their own. Magic. It only is appropriate that we harness this magic for the benefit of the people. It could expansionally produce our national economy in the world stage, opening opportunities for many and bringing prosperity for ponies and humans alike. And we can start right now. And we have a new entry in the project about Dr. Stenslands. Oh, we should take a look, shall we? Stenslands? Sten -sten Stenslands? Where are you, Dr. Stenslands? If you're going to about that, please go ahead. Quite a long one. And there you go. But, coming out. Pama Papa, there's something to tell you, and I need you to promise not to be mad. The scene that lay in the Medvedev household was one that would have been incomprehensible even just a year prior. Lay and his parents sat in front of her on a small couch in the tiny sitting room, staring or uh, with clear worry in her eyes at their young pretty daughter. She'd been working up the courage to speak with them for some time now, and finally done so after a particularly difficult day at the market. Is something wrong, Lenachka? Her mother asked, is it not that Sergei boy bothering you again, is it? I need you to promise before I tell you, Lena replied, screwing her eyes shut. She could feel the tears starting to well up already. Her two parents shared a look with each other. We promise you know that you can tell us anything. Her father replied, as normally a triple demeanor, uncharacteristically somber. The young mare took a deep breath, Mama, Papa, I'm, I don't like boys, I like girls instead. 
I was so afraid to tell you because I love you both so much and I didn't want you to hate me and thought that maybe since I was a pony now, I... The room trailed off into an uncomfortable silence and Lena braced herself for the inevitable shouting or worse. Instead, they she flinched in surprise as her two pairs of arms wrapped around her, pulling her into a warm embrace. Elena Ivanova, we can never hate you, her mother declared. Whether you like boys or girls, it doesn't matter to us because you're still a little girl. Your mother's right, her father continued. Don't think that this changes a single thing. You still need to bring the wash in. It's about to rain. Her mother shouted in a front. It wasn't enough to open the floodgates. A choke laugh turned into a sob, and for a long time, the three Medvedev stood together, content to live in love in a moment without a care for tomorrow. Harmony is both love and acceptance. We lose stability, though. And new entry. Oh, two entries for Dr. Hawk, shall we? Okay, Dr. Hawk. That's Dr. Hawk. And this one, too. Alright. The economy of magic. Yeah, this one's not bad. Maybe you want to read this again, please go ahead, but still. Alright, so... like I cut down half the army earlier. Oh, if you want to I read about four or five total, please go ahead. But yeah. Hmm. Maybe we'll escalate land reform, maybe. It might help us maybe a little bit point for so I mean... I'm not sure what else to do. I hate this part so much. It's so bad. So we get some straight up GDP. 0.198. It's not very much at all. It might help us out slightly. I don't know. Whatever. Before you some Siberian plan, might as well. Comrade Nikolai Bukharin had a grand vision of an economy, economically developed industrial society that flourishes with wealth and stability. He enacted this vision these years ago in the form of a central Siberian plan fueling the economy of the area. With the power of magic by his side, Comrade Bukharin could do the same, something more than that. A new economic and industrial development plan here in the Far East, with the power of pony magic, he can finally realize his work from those decades ago. Industrial, police, uh, industrial expertise and equipment will improve. So we're already at 5.64, which is not bad, but it's really taking quite a while. So if we can speed that up, that'd be great. We're not going to do the doctrines yet, because we all wait till the land doctrine stuff is available, and we're really going and cooking down that way, so... Definitely just wait for that stuff. Uh, poverty's... not that much better. <laughs> Monthly is 0.7, or 70, I guess. Yeah, I mean, 80% is still pretty bad. Not gonna lie. It's still pretty darn bad. I was just kind of hanging out here. They're struggling. They're actually doing okay-ish. Omskis. Let's see if they can hold it, actually. They have ways. Way, 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 way more divisions. Vyakov, Orkuta. That's already... Now it's 1967. So happy 1967, everybody. Why does the deaths keep going up? I just don't understand. Um... One, well, that's not bad. 1.91. That's pretty actually pretty darn good. I guess part of it's just because we keep doing this and that costs more stuff, but still. And what's the point of having the military if you can't afford it? Or do anything, really? Poverty. Yes, poverty, 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 poverty. Connecting the east. Poverty is slowly beginning to improve. Growth by 0.5, cultivating the winter. Russia, the Far East especially, has been one of the toughest climates in the innovative land. The snow is a cruel mistress, and a farm here is quite often a struggle. With magic, however, the hurdles of nature can be jumped. Through the utilization of some choice magical techniques, we'll be able to turn large patches of barren snow into perfectly viable arable land. It would be used in farming all over the place, and hopefully go above and beyond in feeding our people. The cold, however, cruel mistress she is, will soon be forced to bow, for she has no match for the magic of harmony. I just don't understand what we're supposed to do here. This basically costs nothing. It's all the army expenditure, but we have 14 divisions. How is it that we cannot field 14 divisions? And it's not like they're just massive divisions. These guys are 18 combo with, with support. And these guys are 18 combo with support. I just do not understand what we're supposed to do. I don't think it's been balanced very, very well, but maybe that's just me. Maybe it's just, I just don't know what I'm doing anymore. Maybe I'm just going crazy. French community down here. Oh, the fan looks really thick. Wow, they got... Oh, my goodness. Romania, Bulgaria? Wow. <coughs> of course, not Serbia, but... We don't talk about Serbia very much. Oh, oh, Sokolov's increased to 700. That's nice. That's actually quite nice. Um, up next, repurpose Soviet infrastructure would be nice, but... Still. Hey, 88% is better. 
That's why we did it. Far Eastern Siberian Plan. Yeah, that really hurts us. Poverty effects really hurts us badly. Yeah. Getting rid of poverty is always a good goal to have. So whenever we can increase our GDP, that's probably the one we want to do. Eh, not that one. Scientific research would be good. And then we have this one too. Hmm. Let's do scientific research first, and then we'll go back with repurpose Soviet infrastructure. And 3.4. Need more growth. Because I don't want to lower any of this stuff. Cultivating the winter. More monthly crystal green would be good. Urbanization, but really this one's better. Actually, we... Oh, minus 0.24, that's not bad. Oh, wow, look at all this. The Far Eastern Siberian Plan. The first Siberian plan had been marked by the absolute lack of care towards those who were to execute. No hospitals, field clinics, or not even to towns host them. They had to make shanties in their spare time. The workers had a bill for the sake of communism and sustaining themselves on that. Now at this time, so it seemed. Despite ostensibly the same person being in charge, though one could hardly call him a person anymore, Nikolai Bakharin, premier of the Soviet Union, had become a horse. Daniel laughed just out loud thinking about it. Bakharin had become a horse and taking control of Russia once again. What next? Lenin returns as a squirrel? <clears throat> Marx writes a new book, but no one can read it because he wrote it with pause. For all the nonsense surrounding his circumstances, however, it was certainly true that they were much better than they had been last time. Daniel had been a young man who thought that he could hold the entire weight of the world on his shoulders. Shoulders that had nearly broken into the heavy load of concrete and wires, now as an electrical engineer approaching his 50th birthday. He could appreciate the considerable compromises Bakharin had included for this new Siberian plan. L less taxing work hours, better pay, magically built rest house with modern amenities. He had been able to meet them directly with the planners and discuss what might he might need with them, and they had all gone out for drinks afterwards. Small things like this had slowly but surely made the previously unfathomable ranks of intelligentsia and bureaucracy formerly faceless entities seem like real people, perhaps even potential friends. Harwin takes root across all the land. Well, expand the crystal mines. Uh, that seems really good. Remaining opportunities to expand the mines. Decrease stock by 68. Increase the storage. Utilize crystal based tools. Ooh. Ramp up military production. And I did forget something here, too. Ooh. Siberian economy. Oh, heck yeah. I'll do that one. Uh, factory output, yeah. I think I'll do them all. Uh, I did forget we could change these divisions to something else. So that's my fault. I forgot about that. Six divisions. Imps. But we shouldn't have to do this. Honestly, we really shouldn't have to need to do this. Doing this is to save a few dollars. Should you, it's so stupid. 0.49. Hopefully it goes drastically down. Nice. It does like nothing. Jesus Christ. Alright, that's will be it. Waste all that army speed for nothing. <clears throat> and additionally now, though, encourage urbanization. We need that growth. It's been long the case that the further the east you go, the rarer you'll find the cities in Russia. The Siberian climate has never been amazingly conductive to the building of many large urban areas, though they certainly exist. And more rural settlements are especially a common thing to see here in the Far East. All that all said, there's no harm in trying, surely. The urbanization of rural areas is bound to have a positive economic benefits in the long term through the byproduct of introducing profitable business sectors into these areas. It's but one step in the large-scale plan of catching up to the rest of the world, so we may all enjoy the benefits. I don't see the point in doing these ones, really. 25, anything else here? No. For worker trading? Yes. Yes. Alright, so now we've been nearly deathed after we did all that extreme, like, just destruction of our military. <sighs> the price you pay to be stable. My goodness. The AI just does not know what to do. Now they have 13 production units. Wow. At least Omsk unified. We can't compete against those guys at all. And we won't have to unless they reunify, but still. It's just a giant mess. Yeah. 
Actually, I want to do them all because we can. Urbanization. Connecting the east is not bad, but let's do a feature of a kind. <coughs> the gift of magic granted to us through the magical crystals that we've uncovered and indeed is powerful, but even yet it bends to the will of time. Bends to the will of time, the only constant of the universe. Ponies will grow, age, and eventually die. Only afterwards, the children and foals will take their place and continue their parents' legacy. It's our duty to care and nurture our young ones so that they may grow up and bring harmony to our lives and as a state, ensuring that they receive proper education no matter the social status. We'll be the best thing we can do for our young ones. Absolutely. we we'll do the best we can for the big young ones. Alright, let's see. Point two two. Oh! Pay debt, god dang it. Jesus Christ, this is so dumb. Extremely high deficit? Well, hopefully. Well, our growth is just plummeted. Wow, we're very worker directed, huh? Very, uh. Centralized, I guess you could say now. We got a lot more manpower now, but. It doesn't mean very much to me, you know, in all honesty. Hmm. Do we get another one in here? Um, no, I do anyways. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, Bokarin's Academy of Friendship would be good to do as well. Great cause of harmony too. Lose even more attack, holy crap. The old dream. Message to Germany. Break, breaking bread with the Americans. Points on the Senate floor. Pan-Asianists. The plan is pink. Huh, cool. Anything else here? Not really, no. Alright, do that one too. Point two three is not bad. More growth though. More growth. When in doubt, more growth. We got quite a bit of inflation though. Oh, now this is really just mega going now. Actually, where's the leave research? Where's research? Five? Eh, it's still good to do the research one though. Feature of a kind. <coughs> Given. Oh, give it to the poor. Oh, I should have done one earlier. Eh, we'll do this one first. Give it to the poor. Not every point is lucky enough to live in a house protected by the warmth of the fireplace, living the lives of their dreams. Some of them live miserable lives on the streets, with their only source of income being to hope for the generosity of others who are surviving the night is a miracle in and of itself. Cameron Bokar will not lay stones to the suffering of these people. Everyone deserves a happy life, and he has the power to lift them all out of poverty. And of course, trinket subsidies, oh boy, and a share of the wealth. It's really sad that there are people that own grand mansions for their own, while others can't even find a shelter to spend the night in. This wealth gap is something that the Harmonious Union must rectify. We'll encourage the rich of our country to share the riches to the less fortunate so that they may have poor opportunities in life. Unlike the methods of the old, we cannot go around forcefully seizing the property of the rich. We have to think of another method, another incentive to give to the poor. And like normal, we have a new entry for Dr. Pohl. Pohl, Pohl, Pohl. Not P-O-L-E, but P-O-A-L. Oh, right here. Entry number two, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Jedediah is his first name. Dr. Jedediah. No, not Jedediah. Jebediah. Jedediah, Jebediah. Very similar, but whatever. Now we have a yearly surplus of 0.5 billion, which is not terrible. Definitely better than before in a slight civil war in uh, Africa. But what else is new? We can only get one, almost roughly two political power every day. Poverty rate change is going down by 0.31. We're still sharing the wealth, of course. Uh, we could connect the Far East, but we could wait to maybe Bakarn's Academy of Friendship. Ooh, that could hurt us just a little bit. Marching on the hooves. Ooh. Ooh, land doctrine costs. Getting that one done would be, quickly would be very nice. Get more stability. Autonomy of a pony. Subsidized higher education. Academic base begins to worsen, though, versus books for children's and foals. Rapidly improve academic base. Or this one gets worse. What are we up for academic base? Actually, subsidized higher education. Um, or is it no, is this one? No? Wait, what? Public. Oh, public is subsidized. Okay. And that hurts because it's way more cost. But more talk. Oh, I don't want to do that one next. Oh, I think we'll do this one. Fuck Harn's Academy of Friendship. Friendship is not an empirical science. It's not as concrete as the laws of physics. Not as grounded as chemical reactions of elements and not easily proven as mathematical numbers, which is why mastering the subject is no easy feat for points and humans alike. Nikolai Bokharin, while she opened the Academy of Friendship, a place where ponies and humans, old and young, can come to study the fascinating nature of friendship and harmony for the cause of world harmony. Yes, please. 
and up here we're still expecting more growth we're up to 900 i would like to get up to a thousand if possible i think it would be very nice but we'll, we'll see uh went down slightly more but that's still not a big big deal and if we like them big we gotta have them big deals <clears throat> but happy august now everybody we are blitzing through this hopefully and oh wait what you became the green central siberian republic probably because of the elections yeah but you're still fighting Western Siberian Provisional Authority still, and it goes all the way here. They're still fighting. Holy crap. Holy crud. The AI just cannot handle this at all. Which means for us, it's fine, but still. And then after this one, I do want to do this one, as much as I want to get to this one quickly. Um... That doesn't give you more daily army XP, so... The anatomy of a pony. For the world to know of true friendship, and for the bright minds of the Russian ponies and humans to shine, we must encourage them. Our youngs shine with the gleaming potential of a higher education. To truly bring friendship, not just for Russia alone. We must push the sciences of harmony to its fullest potential, so that they may truly gifted ponies and humans could spread their knowledge far and wide. And then, a lesson to remember. The most important lesson for all pony mankind to remember is the simple phrase, friendship is magic. And those three words are placed the only absolute truth of reality. No conflict, schism, or war, no pain can defeat the magic of friendship. We've done our part in educating our populace of its owner, or its power, and it's now up to them to begin the foundations of our brave new harmonic society. A question. At a good commodity harmony, school number four was the first of its kind, despite the name. A to experiment in interspecies education with bright young minds, both human and pony in attendance. There, from sunrise to sunset, they're instilled with book, Buck Harden's vision. They learn together, ate together, and played together. Whether they were on two or four legs, it didn't matter. Yerena Yershova, a teacher of Classroom 3B, thought that she had been assigned possibly the most preco precocious children of Russia. They asked questions one would expect from a high schooler in the same breath as singing kids' songs and thought nothing much of it. Those are the questions she received today from... Oh, well, better industrial expertise? No, we remember that. Please, please go ahead, though. That was a question. Uh, oh, come on. Oh, come on. It's so much lag in this mod. Jesus Christ. What a shame. It really is pretty bad. It's pretty god-awful. Come on, Jesus Christ. Singing kids' songs, but it's a question received today from Aloysia, who sang the most sweetly of them all, that nearly bowed her off her feet. Miss Yershova, why should we learn about friendship? If I'm the richest or strongest or the smartest, won't everyone do what I say anyways? My boy, I knock you on your head every time I wanted to, you wanted to learn. How would you feel about me? If your friends hit you every time they wanted you to play with them, would you play with them anymore? In the past, many people, including many adults, used to think as you do, and the results was very many years of sadness endured by the people. Strength and smarts are important, that's true, but the strongest, smartest thing of all is having friends that you can trust. That's what we call the magic of friendship. Nothing can ever be to people who are united in harmony. Teach them when they're young and they will remember it their whole life. And we're doing marching in the hooves. When assembling an army, one must consider the strengths of the fighting force you have to work with and the strengths of the ponies that are many indeed. With the four hooves, their locomotion is far greater than any that is standard human and their superior strength allows them to undertake more dam demanding tasks than often. Or more often, while we're still not or fully up on the mechanics of them holding rivals, well, they are still able to do it with a zeal, so let us provide them as many as they march to battle. But cooperation is so key. We've made, taken many lessons from the peaceful resolution of the crisis of harmony and among them is that our pony and human soldiers should not be made to feel different. Pitting them against each other or drawing clear lines between races is exactly what sparked the crisis in the first place. In harmony, we are all friends whether we have hands or hooves and such things will be tolerated. Humans and ponies will work together constantly under the banner of a single unified pony or, or pink army. Which would be very good. Right now, though, we are currently doing construction of the Academy Stage 1. The foundation of the Academy will be laid. And then we'll do Stage 2 next of the Academy. Brick upon brick, layer upon layer, the Academy begins to take shape, which would be good. I guess we do these as well, I suppose, if we really want to. Uh, Society of Development will hire foreign instructors again. The economy is not looking so great. Debt to GDP ratio is still going up, unfortunately. Uh, critical debt. Our national debt has reached values over our debt ceiling. Which may cause it. Hmm. Well, there's nothing we can really do about it. We could try this again, but really, civilian spending that's costing us the most. Not sure what we're really supposed to do here. We did get to a professional army, which is very nice. So. <clears throat> this, I just don't think it's been played very much by the devs. This is what the former looks like. Uh, experiment with Anhu's Warfare. All these years, it seems that we haven't fully tapped into the potential that Anhu's Warfare has provided to us. The Earth Boys have enhanced strength, the Unicorns are capable of wielding magic, and the Pegasus are granting the gift of flight. Perhaps it's time for us to truly consider the potential that our spear army has so that we may gain upper hoof in combat against our enemies. We'll see. Happy 68, though, everybody. <laughs> How are we supposed to wage war with literally nothing? Like, it doesn't make any sense. 
Tempt Axe, I could guess. The Man of the Iron Fortress? If you're about that, please go ahead. If only. Hurt just a little bit. Slightly more surplus to help maybe cut down the debt a little more. I mean, we have to do the, the society development stuff, so. Ah, stage 2, yes, please. And we still have 506 crystals, 120 a month. And honestly, that's pretty darn good, so. Hurts the growth slightly, but slightly more yearly surplus. It's a give and take. Not really sure what to say about it. I mean, really trying to rapidly improve poverty, though. That's actually quite good, I'll be, I'll be honest. That's very, very good. Uh, power tools, industrial expertise. Oh, this will definitely help us out more. Um, a growth, GDP growth multiplier will go up. 10% more consumer goods production factor. Overall, that would be very, very strong for us. I think here, admin efficiency. We saw this earlier, but yeah. It would just be better overall. And then basic mechanization. We're still really struggling with this one. And then research facilities. This will go up by the next month and half a month. Rudimentary research facilities. From here, I'll go to outdated probably. So we'll lose some political power. We'll get some more growth modifier and more research speed. And then for academic base, well, basic literacy. That's actually really bad for us. Holy crap. We'll get plus 0.01% more monthly poverty change, which would be good. Very good. 0.21. Not enough. Just not enough, man. I understand why it's so poor. Why can't we go to at least mediocre? Why can't we trade with America? Why can't we do more stuff? Usually we can, but still. Not too many conflicts going on right now. And they're just they're just sitting there. I don't I don't understand. <coughs> Very good organization. Better recovery rate, better land auction costs, just good stuff all around. Let's get land reforms. Increase your GDP for five. Yes, absolutely. It's going to hurt us in the short term, but doing that's going to be super, 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 super important. All right, so with that one done, hiring foreign instructors is good, and better research facilities. Not bad. We'll get back to the schools eventually. Would you look at that? Cool. Point two. Not bad. Not bad. The great cause of harmony. That killing is an awful thing. It's a horrific act of discord against your fellow person that can never be taken back and is condemned under harmony as a result. Yet in warfare, often our only options are to kill tools or killing tools. It's a regrettable thing, so we'll attempt to set out a mission for our army to minimize it as much as possible. Our force will prioritize taking prisoners. Be forbidden from undertaking needless killings and focus on achieving victories that are won with as little ramp and death and destruction as possible. For there's no harmony to friendship if there's no one left or nobody left to feel its spirit. What else do we have here now? Ah. Expertise. Go and do that. It's going to cost us quite a bit more. Oh boy. Oh boy. Not bad still, though. Could be worse. Nice. And now we should probably do a land auction. 40 is not bad. We don't really have tanks, and they just cost so much, so. Attrition planning. More organizational defense, yes. Recruitable population. Let's get that stuff done. Uh, naval stuff. And then air supremacy, air range. Uh, I don't mind the range. But again, we're not really going to be using helicopters. We don't have the industry for it, so. And this one, tactical bombers. We're not really using that. So probably this way with cast. Yeah. Air superiority. Why not? So we've got that stuff done. Still improving poverty, which is good, 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 good. Uh, oh, did it? Oh. No. Okay. That's what I thought. There's nowhere else we could really cut down. It's military and civilian austerity, not really worth cutting down. So, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. What is this? Interspecies tactics, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, this one hurts us quite a bit. Yeah, it hurts our costs. Jesus. Need to consumer goods, free production units, oof. Nice. Great cause of harmony, followed up with what? The Grand Military Academy of Magadan. Points on the Senate floor. On Alicorn in Tokyo. Befriending Americans versus the Japanese. I kind of prefer the Japanese, it looks like. Docking rights that we befriended the many faces of the Pink Army. Um, that wouldn't be bad. Don't need any more command power, really. Rule of sky. Let's have another world stage. How about that one? There's more to harmony than those connections between single souls or even across entire nations. Harmony can be extended across the entire world in a perfect society. A world in perfect harmony where there would be no need for further unification wars or even wars at all. There would be simply one people on one planet united by friendship. 
our diplomats understand these concepts. As we begin to filter out of Russia into the wider world it's with this dream that they begin their missives, some foreigners will inevitably be incredulous about our pony leadership, our claims of magic, or our harmonious ideology, but we can work past these their fears. One way or another, we can extend harmony to the world stage. Should be a good thing. Don't do that too, because we're running out of things to use with the crystals. Science. <sighs> we're getting close to that. Crap. Besides the leading divisions, there's literally nothing else we can do. Almost point. Minus 0.5, that's so good. You could use more war support, though. And we'll get better in district equipment, too. Oh, they're fighting again. The Soviet Socialist Republic. China's here with the Xinan Reconstruction Authority. Great cause harmony. And, of course, we'll do the many faces of the Pink Army eventually, too. In the years since the collapse of the Union, it became incredibly unwieldy to hold anything militarily besides whatever ramshackle foot soldiers you were able to field. Using your industry for aviation or nautical means seemed frivolous when your warlord state was barely able to produce enough guns for your men to hold, but with the times changing and our power growing, we must recognize that there is more to an army than the ground forces. As such, joining the Pink Army will be a proper air force and navy. Completing our armed forces and getting it more on the level with modern, uh, uh, modern nations of the world. Let's just fly far and sail forward if we can. And we also have better industrial equipment if you like to read about that. Excellent. A message to Germany. In a perfect world, we would make friendships with every nation, as every nation deserves to be the guiding hand of harmony. Yet there's one stumbling block for one nation has been so cruel that no such hand has, can be given to Germany. We can make new excuse for the horrid actions of the government or their leadership. National socialism is harmonious, but built, built on strife and violence. Not friendly, but built on hate and horror. For now, we are in no position, physical or material, to take down the Reich, but we can tell them what we think of them. The Reich will hear of every flaw in the wretched regime, and the old dream. What was Karl Marx's dream, if not harmony? It's stateless, markless, utopia, certainly echoes the ideas of Bukharanism. Or Bukharin. If an our leaders look to his manifesto for guidance, our leaders will scream his name from their podiums, while our posters depict him among the, our equine leadership. Every pony or human in the union certainly knows his name. Have we revised his doctrine? Yes. His dream had his fair share of differences, but it was a mere human, almost a hundred years before our time. Ponies, crystals, all would have shocked our forefather, but in time he would certainly understand our vision. Our dream is old, but as we look to the world, we must remember that dream. Someday that dream will be the foundation for a truly harmonious union stretching across the world. A message to Germany. And right now, we can't do import heavy machinery because... We've got too much debt. I'm not sure what we can do. This is really stupid. I really don't like this, but let me ask you something, Martin Bowman. Do you know what anything about friendship? I've spent my entire life fighting. Uh, for Tsarists, the Republicans, I fought every color of reaction to secure the revolution. Then you came with Italians, Hungarians, and Romanians to name a few in your ranks, further supplemented by our own traitors. The state collapsed, and then I was fighting not for my country, but for my own survival, secured at last after months of flight from those who would surely kill me. So as you see, I understand what it's like to have enemies. I also know what it's like to lose again and again, and watch every dream be crushed by hate. So I ask you now, while you bask in your victory atop the greatest city in the world, where are your friends? You live only due to the strength of the security apparatus, which protects you from your own. Hitler was legendary, but three Fuhrers have died since the first. Do you truly think that no one's willing to kill a fourth? Maybe the bull will come from your disgruntled poor, or maybe a student that just learned to drink, or maybe just learned a little bit too much. Maybe a slave will one day avenge his class, so it's long travel under the jackpot. Even these are the most dignified ends you could hope for. What do you understand, what you fear, is that any moment those you support, who support you will drag you into the mud and dust to leave you there. Those ministers who are so close to power, do you trust them not to seize it? And what of the black state to the west, a salivating over another's chance to bring Germany to its knees? It is the greatest of the ironies that while my greatest threat is a German assassin, so is yours. I know you don't have any have friendship, Martin Borman. I would try to explain it, but I fear you might be beyond help. I could give. Loon has taught me more than you could ever understand, but suffice it to say, magic is friendship. Or friendship is magic. Signed, Chair Pointing Nikolai Bakharin. And we can finally do the grand opening, lose some crystals, get more stability, get an event inauguration, or replace basic literacy with primary schooling, which would be nice. And hopefully we remove the whole thing that's costing us way too much money, because this is incredibly stupid, how much everything costs. Like, we're, we've done it. I've cut down, I lost, we lost, or got rid of two more divisions. I, I don't know what else there is to, that we could really do. We're doing the old dream. Um, coming to the world. Docks and Kamchatka, but we can't afford that. We literally can't afford that, so rule the skies. In modern warfare, we cannot simply rely on the might of our ponies and men on the ground in this day and age. The air is to be considered its own battleground, and thus controlling the skies must be our top priority. We'll begin to arm ourselves for the war in the air, as it is a battleground of which we certainly cannot afford to lose. <coughs> Five, six, six. It went barely down. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do. I mean, that's just so incredibly, like, I love the story writing. The story writing is good. But we literally can't wage war. We'll have to cheat, basically, to, to keep going on with this, which I don't like. It's so bad. Oh, and I knew it. I'm going to explode. Ha! 
Arms cast guard and kaboom. What were we to do here? This guy's pretty darn experienced, Shrammy, but still. Inauguration. Academy of Friendship was of Bakharin's proudest addition to the uh, academic landscape of Russia. A massive sprawling campus is entirely dedicated to the city of friendship and harmony that also boasted an extremely strong research division focused on equestrian substances. But entirely magically out of stunning white marble, the core of the academy was an old style castle which held a massive auditorium in which the great Alicorn now spoke to an audience of several thousand bright young minds. Hidden entirely within the crowd sat a young unicorn in the flaming red mane, who had traveled from very, very far away to be here for this moment. Though she could have come with her friends, it had felt more appropriate to come to this new world alone as she had come to the world that was now home for her. Then they had homework to do, of course. <clears throat> The crowd's murmuring stopped instantly. With a loud, scratchy sound, the alicorn magically amplified his voice so that it boomed across the auditorium and began a speech. Humans, ponies, beings of all kind, my name is Nikolai Bakarin, the premier of this reforged nation now that stands in the name of peace and harmony for all. Not very long ago, I roamed the waste of the endless Siberia destitute and wallowing in my own despair, my own self-hatred for failing my motherland and my people in their time of most desperate need. Then, I came into contact with magic, the magic of friendship, and the rest, well, the rest is history. This institute was founded in the same spirit and with the same hope as I felt on the, that fateful day to forward the progress of harmonic ideals and science, and as such is open not just to for my fellow Soviet peoples, but to those beings of the other world and the other world. Everyone is welcome to advance their education here, and so with these words I declare the Academy of Friendship is open. With a brilliant burst of magic, great fireworks lit up the sky, and the faces of the crowd as they roared and screamed their approval, Sunset smiled and began filling out an application. Good thing there was an option for remote learning. Very remote learning indeed. Actually get some more money, hopefully, thank God. Jesus Christ, it's so bad. I know the devs have probably worked on this and tried this whole bunch, but just, there's nothing we can do. And I'm not going to replay all this again. Like, just to make sure we have no debt. Point four four. well, that's a slightly better, but, but, I mean, come on. Expenditures, revenues. And we could try to cut down civilian spending, but that wouldn't be worth it right now. I don't want to cut this down for poverty range, range rate, so. Planes in the night sky is not bad. Basic stockpile of stuff, if we have the technology research, or uh, shooting star stuff. Rural skies. But come to the world. <coughs> the revolutionary cause was dull to a heavy blow when the Soviet Union fell, and Europe was crushed under the fascist jackboot, but the end of the Soviet Union didn't mean the end of communism, despite what some may say. There's still a communist nation standing strongly despite everything, and having such a hostile world is imperative that our nations must stand together, rather than hang separately, which shall reach out to these nations and establish friendships with the government. Bakarin's grand scheme. Even with all his duties, Bakarin still made time to continue his studies in communist literature. The night was Marx, the great base from which the rest of the movement was set sprung. When he had read these works as a young man and as a human, they had seemed so wise the solutions for all mankind's problems contained within. Now, with all his experience, it was all he could do was to not rip his hair out in frustration at all the limitations, assumptions, and outdated thinking. Almost then, seeing his boss reaching his limit, a in came Bakarin's personal secretary carrying a file. Report you, you requested, sir. On the of the wider communist movement. Shall I leave it on your desk? No, no, no. Give it to me. I need a change of pace. The file was almost immediately uh, interesting. Uh, naturally, the victory of the fascists and the collapse of the Soviet Union had not been kind of the movement, but it persisted all the same. Apart from the remnants of the West Russian government within the motherland, communists and communists had survived on the periphery of China as well as within Vietnam and the Western Republic of India. The communists formed a decently large and well-organized party and it appeared that the Eastern government had directly adopted rather leftist ideas itself, looking for the West. Naturally, no communist party had been able to operate in the open in the Nazi and Italian-dominated Europe, but South America and Africa had large and promising movements gathering steam. All they needed was support and, of course, a nudge in the right harmonic direction. Interesting, very interesting. But Karin failed to notice Noticed himself falling asleep as he chuckled contentedly, thinking grand thoughts of the revival of the global communist harmonist movement. When he wake up, these thoughts would coalesce and transform into a grand scheme for reshaping the forces of the workers and peasants movement across the world. Only hope, one only hopes, that they are receptive to new ideas. Did we dare even try to do anything else here? Academic base, more GDP is nice. Yep, and we're over. Are you effing kidding me? <sighs> Jesus Christ, why is this so bad? Uh, we can't even afford anything, so comes to the world, obviously, you have to be next. Hopefully, we'll cut it down. Let's see. 0.97. Over the next month, we'll see. Support weapons. <coughs> Not bad. And inspired by harmony. 
The vision of harmony, comrade Bakar, and saw revolutionize our idea of what communism could be. Considering how far that new wave of ideals has carried us, one can hardly imagine what might happen if more of our fellow revolutionaries understood harmony. That's why we're going to teach communists of the world about harmony and how friendship is praxis. Surely it should go well. It should go well. Done too. Grasses in Nanjing. Nothing else we can do there. Admin efficiency, we can't lower that one at all. Science stuff, we're barely spending extra money on it, so. Oh no, let me know. Is there anything we can do? I mean, I, I don't like this. I don't like how we've been hamstrung so badly. <clears throat> I will still do the poverty stuff, but still. Academic base. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll do the research models. Uh, basic mechanization. Actually, getting agricultural methods down would be good. Oh, this is even good, too. Increasing admin efficiency. Uh, or administrative efficiency. If you don't know about that, please go ahead. We'll leave the, live in the managerial age after all. Good. That's actually good. So from here to here, you get what? Better training times, yeah. Population, group of population, consumer goods. Good stuff overall. So looking good there. Mm -hmm. Alright, not bad. Barely there. Fiscal crisis imminent. Seems pretty normal for us. Seems pretty darn normal. Alright, anything else? Yeah, just... Come to the world. Inspired by harmony. Surely it will go well. Well, we'll see. Since it's 1968 and we can't even afford a military, so, I mean... Honestly, we'll, we'll just have to cheat. I mean, there's nothing I can do. There's literally nothing we can do about it. The East is pink. That'd be nice. Um, debt or no debt. Point one. Can we even afford point one? No, we literally can't afford point one. <sighs> so, so, so if we fly to the pickets high, uh, breaking beds with Americans. I kind of want to try the American one, but... Oh, what's this? Oh, Denver. That's kind of cool. We still have Wallace. Segregate states' subsidies. And who's leading uh, Japan right now? Oh. Well, they're a bunch of fascists, so... Uh, intruder in the castle. Speaking of Pan-Asianists... Ah, breaking bread with Americans. In an ideal scenario, we could probably would want to have nothing to do with the Americans. The capitalist ways don't sit well with the harmonic communists, but compared to other superpowers of the fascist Germans and the imperialist Japanese, they end up being the most agreeable to our struggles and most likely to support us. Once upon a time ago, we stood alongside the Americans, and the great patriotic wars enemies of the Axis powers, and it's our hope that our memory is not, lost, is not forgotten so soon. The recognition of us as the legitimate Russian state would go far in the free world they lead, so diplomatically, they'd be our best bet. For this bread, we think that you could. Improved academic base as well, nice. Pretty good, pretty good. It's just not enough. We'll still do the poverty stuff though, but other than that, there's really not much else here. So, we're at maxed out too, which is really disappointing. Um, here, we're getting very close for Siberian reunification. Remove state fishing fleet, oh, that hurts. Wait, state fishing fleets and state fishing armada. Huh. And your species. I don't see anything about fishing fleets. Army of the people. Infant ideology? Well, it says, but it shouldn't be such an infant ideology now. It's been here for a couple years now. Interspecies army is not bad. Harmonious society. Yeah, no, I don't see anything about fishing. Huh. Alright, whatever. Breaking bread with Americanos and ponies on the Senate floor. They're feeling that Americans value more than their democratic system. It's a large part of their identity as a nation. And while we have issues with its implementation, we can respect such a thing and take advantage of it. We will send some representatives to the plea or case for recognition and support directly to one of their Senate subcommittees and their democratically elected officials there with them. If we are going to get anywhere with Americans, it pays to do well in, their, in a way they're familiar with. Basic difficulties. 
Ah, uh, buenos dias, comrades. A Russian man who doesn't know how to speak Spanish speaking Spanish is a sight to behold, as Bakarin quickly discovered. Based on the looks he was getting, his first impression hadn't gone exactly as he wanted to. With haste, he switched back to his English, a language each delegate thankfully all understood in some fashion. After all, something between them needed to be constant. Indeed, they are a varied bunch, ranging from all over the continent. A revolutionary from Cuba, a Paraguayan militant, a Brazilian Amazonist, a Chilean collective leader. And only some of them, the men who made up this meeting, each with a story more fascinating than the wildest fiction. Yet, yeah, somehow, Bakarin was getting the feeling that his writings were not what was commanding the room's attention. Which concludes my theory upon how a harmony must be prioritized in modern communist action. Your thoughts, gentlemen? You're a horse now? A unicorn, and yes, and next? How did you become... A horse. Crystals, I spoke of them. Does anyone have questions about that uh, harmonic communism, please? Since you're a horse, has anyone else strapped saddle to your back and <laughs> rode you? This form has its curses. Yeah, how are you riding, Nikolai? Has anyone tried to ride you? Very nice, very nice, very nice. You're still going to wait. Actually, one of these... Does one of these give us more uh, GDP? Like, just straight GDP. Yeah, that'd be nuts, nice, but we can't afford 0.3. We can barely afford anything. Like. Dumb. Dumb. Poverty. Well, at least it's, we started off a lot in this episode a lot worse uh, than we are right now, at least for poverty. Like, 10% better. That's, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Uh, even though I complained a whole lot with this campaign, it's still a good campaign. Pensions, anti tank, oh, that's good. Oh, that's 68, that'd be good too. What do we have here? Barbie relief. I don't care what it takes. Yeah, we're over now. Doesn't matter. Helping out poverty is what matters right now. Does not matter to me. When removed, you get just better growth, a little more inflation. Poverty will begin to improve. I mean, it's, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth the cost. Really pulling 1% more real growth, which is fine. We need it. Breaking bread with those up that there Americanos, and then we'll do the pink as east. Probably call an episode, because we'll do this stuff. Probably in the next episode, as we will basically just cheat when we go to war, because there's nothing we can do. Dumb. Big and dumb. There we go. And then the east is pink. Russia's been put back onto the map. It's been over 20 years since we could honestly say such a thing, and thanks to the Harmonious Union. However, uh, we're no longer the Red Menace, the reactionaries that the world imagined us to be. Now we're pink. And we're here to stay. So, in the meantime, let's talk about a couple more focuses, such as Doctor Kamchatka. It was one of our first new acquisitions to the Harmonious Union, prior to which it had been one of the most formidable of the few navies of the Russian anarchy since then, however. The strong naval facilities they have fallen into, well, we have, have fallen into complete disuse. The dockyards, silent as we consolidated ourselves in the Far East and sorted out our social issues. The establishment of our navy, however, there's no better time to get things back into shape. The dockyards at Kamchatka will be made operational once more, and our navy will be built with a spirit of harmony each and every one. The second Pacific Fleet. Oh, I remember that was good ahead. We come talking about back in the action. And when ships newly built, the consolidation of our naval forces continues will bolster whatever new ships we create by recommissioning some of the old ships of the Pacific Fleet and begin figuring out our naval system properly. The chain of command must be established, officers recruited, and only then will the Pacific Fleet be reborn. Not the hanger on that lived throughout the anarchy, but the rightful successor to the Soviet Union's navy and a mighty power at sea. Yeah, we got prepared for war, no peaceful peaceful peacefulness here. Peaceful peacefulness, grand showdown, alright. Well, at least this way we get some free manpower. Oh, crap. Convert industrial centers? Uh, that's not really worth doing. As much as I love the growth, we'll get in the end, all we get is more inflation. So we don't need to do that one. The trans Siberian Railway would be very good to do. They lose some more, but we get more political power, which would be nice. There you go. That's all we need. So that's not terrible. Early cast, that'll be good eventually too. Convert industrial centers, no thank you. And then down there. So businesses, might as well. Point, what the heck happened? Why is it 0.31? Oh, that's because, that's fine. No, nope, no, looking okay there. We are just, it's so bad, so bad. Um, honestly, I'd rather, if we're going to get hit, Project Shooting Star. Sometimes we could really wish right now that instead of performing intricate maneuvers in the hopes of shaking up enemy missiles and anti air rounds, what if the enemy weren't able to detect them in the first place? <clears throat> that'll be the that'll be the target of the new project sponsored by Nikolai Bakarin himself to supersede any air force on Earth and realizing the concept of stealth aircraft and to effectively use them in combat. The project will be expensive, but money is certainly worth less than the lives of our pilots as well as the price of replacing shot down aircraft. 
or shady. Representative John Bravados ran along the Tidal Basin trying to think for decades to distinguish himself as one of Washington's leading statesmen. He conducted himself admirably in hearings and spoke with foreign policy experts from all the major think tanks. He even served on several distinguished boards. He had all these credentials and he could not, for the life of him, think how to get through to these visitors from Russia. Now I understand that you've had many struggles, said the panting congressman, half the company, half chasing a herd of flying horses as they zoomed through rows of cherry blossoms, but I believe good relations can be <clears throat> beneficial. A pony skated in the Jefferson Memorials, inviting surprise shrieks from the Turson side. Groaning, Bradamas trudged up the steps flash, past flashing paraloids, a Polaroids. In a singular ungraceful movement, he pushed himself through a throng of long-haired teens smelling like skunks. He forced himself to continue his pitch. America's always been an advocate for enterprising free spirits. But the horses had paid him no heed. They galloped around the pantheon-like structure, ooing and weeing and awing at the statue. They read the card marble slabs and zoomed around the columns before, once again leaving to stand on the marble steps and look out upon the city. As he weaved up from beyond them, Brahmadas gave him a pleading look. Please, what is it that you want? For the first time since the beginning of his impromptu tour, the horses stopped and looked at each other. Can you get in? How will you say Washington Monument? They asked in broken English. I think we can arrange that. Can't even do this. I just don't think it's been properly pl played, but, you know, whatever. Um, the fight of the, fight of the pick aside. The military theories and strategies have finally perfected the makeup of what is perhaps the now the Pink Army's newest and most viable asset on the field, introducing the Pegasus Battalion. Made up entirely of Pegasus, and perhaps a very small minority of the, the Thestrals. Entire divisions of this battalion can act as fast and nimble shock troops thanks to their ability to fly at great speeds without need of expensive equipment. They'll be able to overrun the enemy before they can set up a proper defense. The theories are correct. A very important asset indeed. And we'll finish with connecting the East. The Far East is indeed a very desolate and remote region, lacking any real infrastructure compared to anything that exists in more developed areas such as West Russia. And important connecting regions as are. We're indeed struggling given the unfortunate, un unforgiving terrain and cold weather of Siberia, but we must persist. War may be on the horizon sometime in the future, and if we don't have a proper logistic system by them, we'll surely lose a fight. This also gives us a benefit of allowing civilians easier transport between regions of the state. But if you enjoyed the long video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. I'll find a way to keep complaining about this campaign, and I'll see you tomorrow. And um, which will hopefully not have to use console commands, but probably use a lot of console commands. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.